counselors, they have said, and this is one of many, people get saved all the time, and they still curse and lie and steal and have a drug habit and commit adultery and retain their sexual addictions. That's why you got all the 12-step programs. That's why you got the promise keepers. That's why you got all these people making tons and piles of money off this stuff. That's the reason. It's just a sin management program, just like the hospitals or a disease management program to make more money off of you. The same in the, the, same in the professed Christian church, folks. That's what's going on. This stuff needs to crumble down and be cast to the, to the winds. Yet what the, what the counselor said is an outright denial of Scripture. The Scriptures, they have a Bible on their desk, I'm sure, maybe probably the NIV or some piece of trash like that, but certainly the NIV still says, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kin kingdom, neither fornicators nor adulterers or drunkards or homosexuals or sodomites or thieves or covetous, drunkards, revilers, will inherit the kingdom of God. But no, they don't believe that, right? The only sin that's going to keep you out of the kingdom is unbelief, right? That's what the pastor keeps saying. Because you don't have to turn from your sins to be saved. There's nothing in the Bible that says you've got to do anything to be saved but trust in Jesus and repeat some magic words. Well, what happens when you do that? You remain a vile, filthy wretch, professed that way, filthy rags, 24-7, and you never escape from the corrupting influence of sin. And it ruins your life and the lives of others. And maybe you enjoy that. I'm beginning to wonder if they don't. So what do they do? You saved in their sins, not turned from their sins. So they shoot the messenger and they blame the victims for complaining instead of praying about it or trying to escape the situation from underneath an abusive spouse or whatever and escape to some safe haven where they can get away from that, and then the church starts gossiping about them that they brought it on themselves. Well, how could they bring it on themselves when a person professed to be a Christian doing these heinous acts of brutalizing the weaker sex? Nothing enrages a real man more than someone that brutalizes the weaker sex. If you're a man, if you got guts, if you got a backbone, pastor... I'm getting bitter. I understand. Back to this. So what's the result then of this counseling? You stay under this counseling, and what's the result? The cycle of abuse continues as we witness in the professed church. The people are ensnared and trapped in this never-ending cycle of abuse as their own websites testify to of people on there crying out for deliverance from this domestic violence and drunken spouses and child molesting Sunday school teachers and homosexual activity going on in the churches. I know this is hard to talk about, but we got to face the issues here. This is what's going on. Pure filth in the churches. We've got to shout this from the rooftops. You got husbands who treat their wives like they're personal slaves. You got incest going on. We got frequent infidelities. The list goes on and on, but the advice from these people remains the same. Bear with it. Pray that God will effect a repentance. Seek more counseling. Get into another program. Maybe you should go elsewhere to get into a program. That might help. I'm not telling you to leave the church. You should run from the church. Get us out of there as fast as you can get, regardless what these people think of you. Who cares what they think of you? Who cares what they say? It's what God sees in your heart that matters. So what? The victim gets the brunt of the abuse and the blame for wanting to escape it. While well, the abuser, he gets handled, or he or she gets handled with kid gloves in the pretense of their belief in Christ and the delusion of the counselors who fear demanding anything uh, to bring these people out of their sins, lest they overstep the bounds of Christian decorum, as they call it, in love. You see, God loves these people, right? I mean, what the scripture says, God is angry with the sinner every day. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against the wicked to eradicate them from the face of the earth. No, they never went out in the book of Acts and said, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life while the people remain in their filth. No, they told them to repent and turn from that, or they would perish. 
But what can anybody in the system really do about all this since they fail to recognize that it's their own message, it's their doctrine, it's their beliefs that has brought it about? They're all under the same lie, saved in your sins to one extent or another. The counselors, they're dealing with the same thing, their own addictions, their own worldliness, their own unchristian dispositions, their anger, their sinful thoughts, their addiction to sports or whatever it is. Their righteousness is the same magic cloak as the people that they minister to, the addicted. It's all filthy rags, even at the best. They're just sinners saved by grace. So we just got one sinner telling another sinner, perhaps worse off than them, of course, where they can get bread. So the church then is the hospital for the addicted, a sin management center where nobody gets cured. Nobody gets cured, but it's business as usual. Gossip and slander and backbiting and dissension and duplicity. All the things said that won't inherit the kingdom. The scripture says, do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom. But they say no one's righteous. And if you claim to be righteous, you're self-righteous. Simply doing what's right. He who does what is right is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. A clear black and white statement. They can't even take that. But you're taught in the system 24-7 that if I say I have no sin, I'm no truth in me. So simply doing what is right by abstaining from all this evil and ruin is suspect then of pharisaical pride in trying to save yourself. That's what we see happening all the time. You see that in all the lessons I talk about, the same thing. How they impugn the righteous how they pursue us because we preach righteousness. Noah says, what a preacher of righteousness, not a preacher of filthy rags, not a preacher of magic words, a preacher of righteousness. Righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. That's what Paul was warning the world about in the book of Acts. So these counselors, what can they really say? They're under the same delusions that the people that come to them. They're just professionals because they've learned all this psychobabble that they think is going to help somebody. But what's it do? It, it leaves them in their addictions. These people need to come clean with God. Everyone, all of them, the, from, the, from the counselors and the pastors right on down to the bottom of the heap of this pure filth undertow in the churches of all this abuse. But it's not likely to happen. See, all the things that are commonplace in the professed ranks like I said, including the, the counselors, are said to disqualify people from the kingdom. In Ephesians chapter 5, he says, But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let this not even be named among you that is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talk nor coarse jesting, which is not fitting, but rather the giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator or unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God in Christ. That's why the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, he says in that chapter, and in, in the Colossians version of that, in chapter 3. But yet, the counselors keep saying that, well, the person doesn't have to stop these things to be saved. Back to the very first page of this. I know people that have really been saved, and they still continue to molest children. He said, even molest children. How can somebody say that? How can how can somebody say that? I don't know. See, it's the done message. What's already been done. It's not what we do, it's what's already been done, as she said. See, the done message is why the sin never stops and why they're all in great darkness and they're going to remain in it. Until that changes, and there's a fundamental shift in their understanding of repentance and faith proven by deeds, and people coming clean with God, then all the rhetoric, and all the counseling, and all the psychobabble is just going to sink in the sand with everything else in their ultimate ruin and failure. See, sound counseling begins with sound doctrine, free from any mixture of error. That's what that means. You can't pacify the sin out of somebody or coddle them in their sins. The vain promises of peace, peace in their sins, or liberty in, uh, that they're saved in Christ while they're sinning. It's only when sin is forsaken and put away and crucified in repentance that God's mercy can be dispensed and the person can really be filled with the Spirit. 
He who covers his sins shall not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them shall find mercy. Proverbs 28, 13. Confesses and forsakes them. 